Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Hello, Mrs. Farmer. Hi, Mr. Farmer. Why do you have bacon in front of you? I love bacon, that's why. Who doesn't love bacon? I have a bacon story okay. and a bacon journey. You think about bacon in the way we know it today. If you buy it in the store, you look at it and there's so many different avenues. Right. We're gonna give you today a recipe to make your own bacon mm -hmm. in your own kitchen in three days. Mm -hmm. We'll call it the three day cure or whatever. It's way better. But then if you think about the curing process itself, mm -hmm. let me ask you a simple question. Do you plan on us living in a cave anytime soon where we don't have access to a refrigerator or anything like that for like, I don't know, six, eight years? Yeah, that'd be fun. No, actually Wrong no. Wrong answer. <laughs> no. No plans on living no, in a cave? No, no plan for a cave. Bacon as we know it today, old habits die hard. You think about the old days. I love the old ways and I love the old days and you watch the Bill Dixon segment. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, everybody was putting up their bacon. Things were different. Right. These people who had been through hard times, had been through the depression, didn't have refrigerators, didn't have the simplest of things. Not too long ago, people in our lifetime did not have electricity. So how did they store things? How did they preserve things? Right. How did they prevent botulism? Right. I don't want to eat something and die. It sounds rather unpleasant. Yes, it does. <laughs> so you think about the hog killing process. Mm -hmm. We've been all through that. They would fatten their pig up and get it as big as they possibly could. Why? More meat. More meat <laughs> at all costs. That's, That's right. where we're going. So they had to cure their meat right. to store it mm -hmm. for long periods of time because a lot of these people had a lot of kids. And when you killed that big hog or two hogs or whatever, that was your meat for the winter. That was the way when they killed an elk way back then, or a bear, they cured a ham. Interesting. These habits die hard. So when you go to the store, you see years and years of research. First of all, the smoke and the salt, what do they do? They preserve, they dry, they shrink. The smoke actually is antimicrobial. What it does is it kills any kind of pathogen in there, any kind of microbe that can make you sick. Okay but they found that out accidentally. In the old days, you see, you see on the West Coast, they used to take, the Indians used to take the uh, smoked fish, they put them over the fire, they let them dry, right? while they let them dry to get the moisture out of them because that's where the, that's where the bacteria stays. Yeah. They want to get as much moisture out as possible and they want that salt to sink in and the yeah. smoke. And that was the, that was the initial cure. They figured that over time. And when that smoke comes up and imparts that antimicrobial resistance shield right. on that, it tastes good. Yes, it does. So they figured out that they'd smoke fish, they could keep it for long periods of time and use it over time. That was passed down and passed down and passed down. Now what happened in the not too distant past? They started using potassium nitrate, saltpeter, you heard of saltpeter. Mm -hmm. Carter Caves, there's saltpeter cave. They used to mine saltpeter out of that to use for TNT. Really? Or they would use it to blow things up. Okay. They would use it for uh, rudimentary gunpowder. So here you are having something that they put in there, right. potassium nitrate, that stops the growth of microbes so you don't get botulism. And the later progression of that, the potassium nitrate, are the pink salts that we have today. Mm -hmm. Now when they cure that today, it keeps it on the shelf a lot longer, and that's what they use. When you heard old Bill Dixon talk about pink salt, right. that's the latest iteration okay. of, of that. Now, here's my journey with bacon. You know as well as I do, if we just went to the store and bought regular bacon off the mm -hmm. shelf, we grabbed a pack of bacon, and it had those nitrates, nitrites in it, right. and I ate it, it made me sick. Me too. It gave yeah. me indigestion. Right. I don't know the reason for that. Then I started seeing cured versus uncured. Right. What does it mean? What does uncured bacon mean? Is that without nitrates, nitrates? They use something in there to cure that. A lot of times it's celery seed, which has those same qualities Hmm. And it actually, over time, as it leaches into that, it becomes a nitrate, or those okay. properties do the same okay. thing. So if it is uncured, it still has technically nitrates. And I have yeah. bought that and tried that, and it does not, it's not as bad on my system. There's something in the pink salt that bothers me. Yeah. Therefore, my journey to the bacon that we have today is a long and drawn out one. I don't want to get sick when I right. eat bacon. And you like to eat a lot of bacon. I love bacon. I know you And do. they're finding out that animal fats aren't as bad as they mm -hmm. thought. So, today, you can go out and you can buy 
pork belly. What is bacon? What part of the pig is it from? Right. The belly. The belly. This is what you recognize right here as bacon. That strip right there. Does that look bacony to you? It looks bacony. Now, you want your bacon to have taste. Mm -hmm. This green bacon right here, mm -hmm. that's green. What okay. does that mean? It has just been processed. It's that piece of the belly right there that we consider bacon. In Europe, different parts are used. In Canada, sometimes you use loin. In the United States, this is considered bacon, the okay. belly. Yum. Yeah. The thing is, people th people want bacon to have this shelf life for three years, and we don't need to do that. Yeah. This is a five pound piece of bacon that we're gonna cure in three days, and we're gonna eat it in You'll less eat it. than a week. You'll eat it in a day. <laughs> You'll <laughs> eat it tonight. Day. Don't tell all, right. all our secrets. Okay. Well, here's a picture of a whole side that we cured, and we cold smoked this. That means we go up on the hill, mm -hmm. put it in the cold smoker that we built. When temperatures are lower outside, we want it to be cool. You don't want it to be more than 70, 80 degrees, and you would just want to roll lots of hickory smoke on this. I want right. hickory smoke on this. Hickory smoked bacon, you've heard of that. Yeah. So we roll that smoke in that cold smokehouse. The fire is way separate. It cools down. All you're getting, you're not getting the fire and the flame and the heat, you're getting, you're getting smoke. the smoke, it rolls up. And here's the way we cured this. Equal parts, kosher salt, brown sugar, real maple syrup, mm -hmm. which as you know, when we did it, there's only one right. ingredient in that, that is sap from yes. a maple tree that you reduce down. Equal parts. We're gonna do about a third of a cup of, of each, each for a five pound slab. Tell Tell a cherry, cherry pepper. Your favorite. And cayenne. So we got black pepper, and Bill Dixon called it red pepper. Called it red pepper? Called okay. it red pepper. Okay. Now, as this sits for three days, a three day cure, each day you take it, it's already got its little juice going, mm -hmm. you turn it over each day. Take it out, set it here, put it in the smoker for a mm -hmm. couple hours. Now, I'm gonna actually put some heat on this. This will cause that to shrink. Okay. It's gonna make it easier to cut. It's gonna get a little patina. Yeah. A little darker patina on it. And again, you could bring that internal temperature up to 120 degrees while it's in the smoker. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put it on about 250. Now, boom, in the smoker, how many hours you want. It's edible like this. How much smoke do you want on it? I like quite a bit, okay. so a couple hours. I don't want to get that internal temperature up. I don't want to cook it, per se. Right. I don't want to get it over 120, 130 degrees. When we cook it, we will attain that, oh, well over that 160 degree for pork. Actually, 150 now. But we're going to attain that temperature through the actual frying process. All right, let's put it in the smoker. What do you smell now, Mrs. Farmer? Amazing yumminess. Bacon, that smells so good. Got our smoke smell now. Now, you can tell that's kind of leaning up towards me. I'm gonna cut this off square. I'm gonna have a big old hunk we can use for beans like and it. bacon or whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off to get it square so we can get some bacon. Now, you see what that looks like in there? What does that look like, Mrs. Farmer? Looks like bacon. bacon. Look at that right there. Oh, wow. soup beans. Now, I just sharpened my knife and I got a big long knife so I can make one cut all the way through. To me, Yum. <laughs> to make you that happy. is bacon. That right there. I can't wait I to try it. I just can't tell you what it smells like in here. Ooh, yum. That smells country right there. Mm -hmm. That smells country. That is a big old piece of bacon right there. I can make a meal out of that. That looks delicious. Just that. I know you could. You want to try, Mrs. Farmer? Are you going to share? Yeah. You are. Still a little hot. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Are you kidding me? White, the fatty part. That's good. This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. We got the smoke. We got the salt. We got the sugar. We don't have the It's chemicals. like eating candy. Yeah. Fantastic. I can't stress this enough. Go to your butcher shop. Mm -hmm. Ask for, I think it was, that ended up being about $7 a pound. Okay. What does good bacon cost right. you? Really good bacon. Oh, yeah. $8 a yeah. pound? Oh, my. Really good. Good let's, job. Let's, let's eat a bunch of this, and then let's do dessert. Let's have cake. All right. <laughs> Yum.